There's one more topic I want to show you, which is fractional cascading. That you can use to improve the query time for range queries in range trees. And this is a quite advanced topic. So this is not something I would ask you in the exam, but it, I think it's nice to have seen it once. So what we want to do is I give you two tasks. The first one, we are two sets. We have uh, a set A that has some numbers and we have a subset B of it. So for example, here we have the set A that has these numbers, 3, 10, 19, 23, and so on. And we have a subset B, 10, 19, 30, and so on. Now what we want to do is we want to support a 1D range queries in the multiset in k plus 1 times log n time. Not order of log n time, but exactly 1 times log n. So we want to report all the elements of A and all the elements of B that lie inside this range. For that, we allow that we use n log m bits extra space, exactly this much, not order of it. How could we solve this? Do you have any idea? Uh, n log m bits tells us that we can store something for every element in A. And log m bits that we need to point to a specific element in B because there are m elements here. So this tells us basically for every element here we want to point to one element there. And the element we want to point to is the smallest one that's at least as large as A. So the element 3 here should point to number 10. Number 10 here shall also point to 10, 19 to 19, 23 to 30, and so on. And at the very end, 105 points to nothing because there is no element here. Now, how would we do a 1D range query here in k plus 1 times log n time? To do this, we do our binary search on A to find the first element that's at least as large as the 20. We can do that in exactly log n time by starting from the middle and then do our binary search. There are n elements, so we take log n time for this. This is exactly the 1 times log n. And then we only have to walk through this array to report all the points and at the same time take this connection down here and report all the points that lie down there. So we walk through the array A, report all the points, then we take the connection, walk through B, until we find the element that's pointed to from the end here. And then we find all the points that lie in B. So the difference here to what we would usually do is that we only do one binary search. Only do one binary search in A, we don't have to look for the number 30 in B again, because we can directly take this pointer. Otherwise, if we had to do another binary search, then the run running time would be k plus log n plus log m, which is too slow for us. Now, how does this help us? This improved the running time kind of for 1D range queries, but it only made the order of go away. So, asymptotically, it's still the same. But we can use this for our 2D range queries to get rid of one log factor. How do we do that? This is the so-called layered range tree. So we still have our binary search tree for the X coordinates. But instead of storing a second level binary search tree for the Y coordinates, we use this concept here to store everything in arrays. So we take one array that contains all the points sorted by y-coordinate. And now here we split it into two subsets. So we take all these points, store them again in sorted arrays in the second level. And then we add these pointers as we just defined in task 1 to these second levels. 
And that we do in every step. So instead of creating trees here, we take these arrays and we also store the pointers. And now here you see we have two pointers. We have one pointer that goes to the three in this array and one pointer that goes to the smallest element that's larger, the 23, in this array. So every element here gets two pointers to the ne next two layers. And then this is how the whole data structure looks like. Now how does a query look like here? Let's say we want to have all the points with x coordinate between 16 and 53 and y coordinate between 18 and 60. We do again a first level query here. So we find all those canonical subsets. And then in the second level we have to do our query here. So this subset gives us this point. This is easy, we just check um, does the y coordinate lie inside? No, it does not. Continue. This canonical subset points to this array. And now here we have to do our 1D range query. But instead of going through all of them, we just start at the top and do our little trick to at the same time go to the next layer. So we start at the top here. We find the number 19 and we continue the same way as here to the left. Then here we go to the right. So here again we take the pointer to the right. And then we again go to the right, we take the pointer to the right. And then we end up at this element and we only have to check. So within log and time we can go through these pointers to find this element. Same time here we go to the right, so we have to take the right pointer here. We go to the left, we take the left pointer and now we already end up at the correct element. So we already end up at the first element that lies inside the query range. And here we don't have to do another search. So we can directly walk through this and report all those points that lie inside the query range. So instead of doing a binary search on each of these levels, we only do a binary search in the very beginning for the bottom boundary and then take these pointers. So for the whole second level query, we only take order of lock and time once and then we follow the pointers which takes order of k time. So for this whole thing we only need order of k plus lock n time. And we don't need the log n for all of these canonical sets, but only exactly once. And then we get a running time of order of k plus log n. And this then immediately generalizes us to larger dimensions, because we can do two dimensions in k plus log n, that means we can do three dimensions with another log factor, k plus log squared n. So we can do d dimensions in k plus log to the d minus 1 n time. So this small trick of not doing a binary search again but using all these pointers that of course take some more space but it's fine because the space storage still is exactly the same as before. So it doesn't increase asymptotically. That gives us the shaves of one log factor of the um, running time. And this is an amazing result. This is a really smart technique. It's very hard to come up with this. But once you've seen it and you've played around with it a little, it's, it's amazing that this works. That's it for orthogonal range queries. Thank you for watching.